Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today's tutorial is going to be a lot of fun because the skin is going to be flawless and glowing and the eyes are going to be vibrant and colorful and the lips are going to be truly one of my most favorite nude lip combinations I've used on my channel thus far. And because I've partnered up with About Face for this tutorial, all of the lip products I'm using are from that brand. I'll go ahead and show you some swatches here. I use their lip liners, I use their glosses, I use their liquid lipsticks, and it really turned out fantastic. So be sure to stick around to the end to see how I use them. And without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the new Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair Cream to prep our model's skin. This is actually a serum in a cream treatment. It's packed with great ingredients such as Japanese indigo extract, mondo grass root, hyaluronic acid, and ceramides, and, and all of these work together to hydrate, balance, and soothe the skin. It is intended to be an overnight treatment, but I always tend to gravitate towards overnight creams because they're usually thicker and, and um, super moisturizing, which I love because it creates the perfect base for makeup to grip onto. Once we have the skin prepped, I'll be heading over to the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in the shade 350 Maple, and I'm applying this on with a makeup sponge. This ended up being the perfect shade for our model, Hannah. This is a foundation I've been using off and on ever since the brand was nice enough to send it my way. It is super radiant on the skin. It has great pigmentation to it. It feels lightweight, and best part is it has that SPF of 30 in it. I'm choosing not to bring this around the eyes only because we'll be going in with a color corrector and concealer around that area anyways. So there's really no sense in double layering up on product, which will help in the long run with preventing any creasing. Once I have this foundation applied, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Vanish Color Corrector in the shade Medium and apply this to the areas of the skin that have slight discoloration. Now, if you or your clients have a similar skin shade as Hannah or slightly deeper, I'd recommend using this product in the shade Tan, but um, <laughs> this is the only shade I have. I use it on myself and I really like the formula, so I just had to make it work, but I've applied it to only one under eye, so you can see how it looks once I've blended concealer on top of it compared to the other eye without it. And then of course, I'll later apply the corrector to the other eye as well. Next, I'm using the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick from Makeup by Mario in the shade Medium Dark to add some definition and warmth back to the face. I'm applying this to blow the cheekbones, the jawline, down the sides of the nose, and the perimeter of the forehead. And I'm applying this on with a brush. If I'm not mistaken, this brush I think is from Makeup Forever, but really you can use whichever brush you like. I prefer a foundation brush, such as the one I'm using, or a blush brush, or anything that isn't too dense and has some movement to it, but regardless, I do prefer applying this product on with a brush rather than straight from the component because it gives me more control. This way I can determine how much of the product I want to apply and it gives me more of a diffused application rather than drawing on those lines and stripes and all that. Unless you're going for that no makeup makeup look um, and you don't have much foundation on underneath this, it's easier to get away with applying this product on straight from the stick because you're not having to really move around a lot of foundation when blending it out but once I have this product applied I'll come back to this in a minute to blend it out after I've applied the concealer. For concealer I'm using the Jouet Essential High Coverage Concealer in the shade Creme Cafe and I'm applying this to the under eye area before blending it out with a sponge. This is another product I've been obsessing over lately. Usually you see me use the same concealer such as the uh, the Tarte Shape Tape, or the Too Faced Born This Way, or the Sensual Skin Enhancer from Kevin Aquan, but this one is quickly becoming one of my new favorites. It's full coverage, it's hydrating, and, and, and it really doesn't crease much. Like, you usually see me in these tutorials apply the concealer, blend it out and all that, but it takes a minute by the time I get around to applying the powder to set it. And usually by that time, the concealer has creased already, so I have to blend it out again before setting it. But I've noticed with this concealer, there's hardly any creasing when it comes to that time I apply the powder. And once I have all of this blended out, doesn't it look really beautiful? The area around the eye is just concealed and brightened and makes for the perfect base for the colorful eyeshadow 
shadow will later be applying on. So now I'm gonna spend the next few moments applying on the color corrector and the concealer onto the other eye and blend out the contour. Alrighty, now that we're finishing up on this blend, I'm gonna use this Soft Pop Blush Stick from Makeup by Mario in the shade of Soft Coral and apply this onto the apples of her cheeks. Notice here how I'm applying this on in more of a tapping motion rather than dragging, and that's important for me because I don't want to drag or move the complexion products we used earlier underneath this. I simply want to just layer this on top. And the same goes for the blend. I'm using the brush on the other end of this product to tap and diffuse out this blush, really pressing it into the skin to get a soft and diffused pop of color. The bronzer contour stick I used earlier also has this same brush component on the other end of it too, so that's a great option to blend that out as well if you want, but these are really beautiful cream blush formulas. I love the colors they came out with. They blend like a dream and they're buildable. You can build this pigment up if you want a more intense blush, but for today, since the eye makeup is going to be so vibrant, I want to take it slow and steady with the blush right now. Wait till I'm done with the eye makeup and then decide if I want to add more with a powder blush. To set these complexion products into place, I'm using this Laura Mercier translucent powder and applying this on with a powder puff, really pressing this into the skin. You can see here what I was talking about earlier with the concealer. Take a look at the other under eye that I'm not setting right now. There's literally no creasing and it's been sitting there during the whole time I've been blending out the contour and the blush. I must say, I, I really am impressed. Not that I really mind creasing with concealer, that is before I set the powder of course, because once I use the technique I have with setting concealer, regardless of the brand, it usually doesn't crease anyways throughout the day once I apply the powder, but this is nice to point out for those of you who prefer using less powder than I do. For those who prefer having a more radiant looking under eye, but without having to deal with the creasing that usually occurs, this is definitely worth trying out. For the jawline, I'm taking a little extra powder here and applying it directly under where we had applied the contour bronzer earlier. And what this will do once we leave it here for a few minutes before wiping it off, is it'll sharpen the contours and make Hannah's jawline appear more pronounced. And the same will go for the under eye area. I'm applying a good amount of this powder underneath the eyes from where we had applied the nose contour all the way up to the hairline, following the lower lash line directly up and out. Not only will this serve as a blueprint to help me decide where to blend out the eyeshadows later, but it will also catch any fallout we might get from the shadows. Next, I'm using this Benefit Hula Bronzer, and I'm using this to emphasize the cream bronzer we had used earlier. I'm really not using a whole lot of this, just a little here and a little there, but it really makes the biggest difference. I love layering powder products on top of cream products. It just, it, it reinforces the dimension and structure of everything, and it really makes the skin look that much more flawless, both in person and in photos. 
Okay, so now that we have most of the complexion products done with, let's move on to the eyes. To begin, I'm using this shade here from the Norvina Pro Pigment Palette Volume 2, and I'm placing this onto the lid with a flat concealer brush. I'm packing this on with a flat brush rather than a fluffy blending brush because I want this to be super pigmented and opaque. And I'll later go in with a blending brush to diffuse the edges. And because I'm starting to notice fallout, I'm taking more of that translucent powder and adding it to the under eye to catch that fallout. I tell you, <laughs> blues and greens can be so dangerous in terms of fallout. In my opinion, it's even worse than black. Nothing is worse than your under eye being ruined from blue eyeshadow. So if you're one to do your eye makeup after you've done your face makeup, like myself, don't be shy with placing that loose powder underneath to catch that fallout. I'm going to be straight up <laughs> and honest with you. This eye makeup today was a struggle for me. I've made some mistakes along the way, which I'll share with you in a bit, but you can see here as I blend this shadow out, I'm losing that pigment and it's shearing out too much and becoming kind of patchy near the crease. And, and yeah, it's at this point I'm getting a little worried, but I kept the faith and I packed on a bit more of that same eyeshadow shade. Next, I'm using this shade here from the same eyeshadow palette and packing this on to the inner third of the eyelid. I'll also point out that I highly recommend using an eyeshadow primer, which will help in preventing the shadows looking patchy like this. It's really not the fault of the shadows I'm using. They, they really are beautiful. It's really my fault. I don't usually use bright colors like this, so I rarely ever use an eyeshadow primer, but in this case, I, um, I really should have. It really makes a huge difference. Okay, lastly, I'm dipping into this shade here and placing this in the very inner corner of the eye. And now we're starting to see the color story come together. We have that flawless, the <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I would say flawless, but you know, we are seeing that color gradient happening from the bright yellow green in the inner corner, diffusing out into that teal blue on the outer corner. And then heading back to that blending brush, I'm just diffusing the edges before heading back to those same three eyeshadow shades to place on the lower lash line. Okay, so now that we have all of this fallout, I'm just taking a large fluffy face brush and wiping this right off. And as you can see, the loose powder we let sit there really saved the day and prevented the under eye from becoming totally ruined by the eyeshadow fallout. And to add a bit more dimension, I'm taking this shade here from the palette and applying the smallest amount to the outer corner of the eye. This shade is a navy, blue kind of color so it's not as harsh as black and it ties in nicely with the rest of the color story we have going on here. To further emphasize the outer corner of the eye, I'm running some bronzer right through the outer temple area. Notice here how my hand is placed. This just helps control the placement of this bronzer. I want to keep that line we had created earlier with the concealer and powder to remain defined. But do you also notice how the shadow is looking a little patchy or is it just me? Either way, it's driving me crazy. I'm sure y'all will do a much better job at blending than I did here today, but I was in panic mode, so I thought, you know, maybe if I add some glitter on top, it'll hide the patchiness and all, but <laughs> nope, nope, not at all. It just made it way worse. I'll show you a clip here of what happened. <laughs> oh, Oh my goodness gracious, what a disaster this had become. The moment I did this, Hannah and I both just started cracking up. It was a mess, so I had to wipe it all off and start all over again, but it's fine. Once I did that and the other eye off camera, I turned to the Better Than Sex Mascara to run through the upper lashes. We're going to be applying on falsies in a minute, but running this through the lashes beforehand will help her lashes blend seamlessly in with the false lashes. And then with this one size point made liquid eyeliner, I'm running this along the lash line. I'm keeping it really close to that lash line as well. I'm not wanting to create a bold liner or wing or anything like that. Just something super simple. <laughs> 
<laughs> I still can't get over that glitter. And I know I sound like I'm being hard on myself, y'all, but I I'm just being facetious. I gotta poke a little fun at myself. And although you would never know that I had to wipe it all, I had to wipe all the eye makeup off and start over, I wanted to show you that footage to prove that I have my failures. These things happen. That's why I always try encouraging you to step out your comfort zone, try different things. And if worse comes to worse, wipe it off and start over. It's just makeup. It's not that serious. And today is a perfect example of that. I'm trying something I don't usually do. And although, yes, my, my you know, <laughs> my blending may not be my greatest work today, I'm still really pleased with it. And I think it looks really beautiful. So anyways, I've added on these Ardell Wispy Lashes and I've run mascara through the bottom lashes. And then using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel in the shade of Dark Brown, I'm running this through Hannah's brows. Because the eye makeup is such a statement already, I'm not using a whole lot of product through the brows today. And plus, she already has naturally beautiful and full brows so just a bit of this tinted brow gel run through the brows will will add the touch of fullness and depth i'm looking for without looking too intense by the way this is kind of random but i want to mention it because I, I didn't film this part on camera but if you notice when hannah has her eyes closed you can see the shine from the glue on the band of the lash to fix that later on, what I did was I ran the liquid pen eyeliner right on top of that and it conceals it right away. You can also use black eyeshadow, but I, I thought I'd mention it because sometimes I forget to do it and then I notice the lash band in photos or, or in video footage and I could just kick myself in the behind for forgetting to line it. So give it a try, it makes a big difference and it only takes a few seconds. All right, next I'm using the blush from this Anastasia Beverly Hills face palette and I'm using it to reinforce the cream blush we had used earlier. I really love this coral peach blush shade from this palette. I believe they have a few different face palettes with different shades, but this one here is called Off to Costa Rica. To add some glow back to the skin, I'm using this More Than Glow highlighter from Catrice in the shade Supreme Rose Beam and dusting this onto the high points of her cheekbones, down the center of her nose and Cupid's bow. I don't really want her skin to be too glowy today. I'm kind of vibing with this soft matte finish. So I'm being really careful not to use too much of this highlighter because it can be super blinding, which is why I do love it. This highlighter is one of my favorites because it's, it's not glittery. It makes your skin look Look authentically radiant and it's super super affordable it's only five or, or six bucks something like that you can't beat that okay next I'm using the new about face blushing beige matte fix lip pencil in the shade midnight seduction and using this to line Hannah's lips these lip products are really the star of today's show I've been using them off camera ever since I received them and I can tell you that they're really really good I love that the products are all vegan cruelty free and cleanly formed formulated without gluten or any of those um, like synthetic fragrances. And they're quality products. You know what I mean? These lip pencils are super creamy, they're buildable, and they are matte, but they still keep the lips soft and smooth without the liner moving around throughout the day. I love this mauve toned liner for today's look, but as you saw from the from the swatches I had in the beginning of the video, all of the shades in the Blushing Beige collection range from peachy beige and warm chestnut to soft mauves and, and a terracotta rose. So there's definitely a beautiful range there for all skin tones. Once I have the lips lined, I'm gonna use the About Face Blushing Beige Matte Lip Color in the shade Fantasis and use this to trace over that liner. Most of you know by now that I love using liquid lipsticks to trace around the lips, whether I use a lip liner underneath it or not. It just makes everything look really crisp and clean. Especially with these matte liquid lipsticks, they're extremely pigmented and they don't budge throughout the day. You have the versatility there to keep it matte if you'd like, or you can play it up by adding some gloss on top, which which is what I ended up doing here in just a minute. For the center of the lip, I'm using the same matte lip color, but this time in the shade Dilemma, and I'm placing this right in the center. While I love that mauve chestnut hue around the borders, I wanted something with a slightly more peachy hue right in the center. When I swatched all of the shades on my arm for the intro, I found that these colors looked really stunning together, so that's why I decided to pair them. And by the way, I'll list down below in the description box all of the products I'm using here today, as I usually do, but I'll also list all of the shades of the swatches I had on my arm earlier 
in the order I had swatched them in. So that way, if you found any shades that you really liked and gravitated towards, you'll know which one it was. All right, so next I'm using the About Face Blushing Beige Light Lock Lip Gloss in the shade Plastic Petal, and I'm applying this right on top, more so focusing this in the center of the lips. You all, I'm gonna go on the record and say this is my most favorite nude lip I have ever done on my channel. And I'm not just saying that because this is sponsored. I really mean that. And I'm gonna tell you why. A few years ago, I had created a similar nude lip on a model where the liner was a mauve color and the, and the center of the lips had a peachy hue, but I couldn't remember what I had used and I've thought about it ever since. But today, finally, I was able to duplicate that nude lip with these product combinations and I'm absolutely obsessed over it. And of course, if you're using the gloss on clients, I'd recommend using a lip brush to keep everything, you, you know, sanitary. But I ended up giving this gloss to Hannah so she could use it again throughout the day. So <laughs> now I'm gonna have to buy another. Oh, by the way, this reminds me, the brand was nice enough to give us 10% off our purchases. So I'll be sure to include that discount code down below as well. But. Yeah, anyways, with a lip combo like this, for real, I don't even care how the eyeshadow looks. My eyes are drawn to the lips. They're just, <laughs> it's just stunning. Okay, for the last product, I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to set the makeup and to lock it into place, which officially makes this the last step in how we created this vibrant look on our naturally beautiful model. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.